All right, what's up, guys? This is a live uh, update for the Corona quarantine situation. It's, I, I'm Julio. I'm here with Francis. Hey, guys. Um, and basically, we um, our plan is that we're going to drop one more old episode that we've already recorded, um, which is the one that's going to come after this little section. And uh, then we're going to have new episodes for you starting next week. Uh, we're figuring out if we're going to add additional ones or whatever. We're going to stick to our regular Tuesday, Thursday schedule. Most of these episodes likely will be Julio and me, although we have a couple guests that we might bring in as well. And we're also going to have, uh, we ordered microphones, Julio and I did, so the audio will continue to be quite good um, going forward. I know this is a little bit uh, compromised, but that's just because we're not totally set up yet. But thank you guys for bearing with us. We hope to continue to bring light and levity to your lives in these otherwise troubled times <laughs> very well said i did not have sexual relations with that woman yes or no did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance yes i had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on nancy kerrigan i am deeply sorry for my irresponsible and selfish behavior i engaged in Hey, ladies and gentlemen, it's Oops the Podcast. You know us. You listen to us frequently. <laughs> I'm Francis, and he's Julio. Gee, how are you? Good, man. How you doing? Great. Nice I'm fantastic. You. you know why I'm so good? Why? Because we are joined by a spectacular guest this week. It is Carly Aquilino, Thank everybody. you guys for having me. What a joy. I'm so happy to be here. I've It's been a journey so far. Has it? And yeah. I just, yeah, because I'm drinking tea. Yeah, we're big tea it. people. We, uh, you guys we... are big tea people, and I said I didn't want any, and I got some. So yes. that's the vibe. Yes. <laughs> we blurred the lines of tea consent. Dude, I get now why your girlfriend likes to come here after her elective surgeries. She does. Because she, she gets cared for. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I told... Oh, yeah. You're a nurturer. Uh, kind of. Okay. Rel he reluctantly nurtures. <laughs> I, I have a threshold. I have a threshold. I can't, I can't nurture too much. Why? Then what? Then because if because then I feel taken advantage of. Okay, yeah, I know I feel that. You know, yeah. if you start asking for the nurturing, uh, or I don't expecting it. Yeah, mm. then then that's it's, too much. I don't want to give it out as much. Carly, we are so excited to have you. Um, you are a, a shining star. Wow, thank you guys you, so much. You made a big <laughs> splash on MTV's Girl Code. Yes. And we've had so many people that were on Guy Code and Girl Code. That those two shows. Right. Now I have to be honest. I missed them. Okay. I never really watched them. Yeah. And I didn't. I'd always hear about them, but I just wasn't a big MTV guy. Right. And yet those two shows m built or blossomed the careers of a lot of yeah people we know. A lot of people. It was cool because they put a lot of. It was like mixed. It was some people were improv people, some people were just actors or whatever. But for the most part, there was a good chunk of us that were stand ups and right. comedians, and it was just it's a it was a great cast. They did mm -hmm. a great job casting it. How many years did you do that for? Five. Holy tits! Yeah. That was crazy. That, I remember when that was all happening. That was like the MTV movement. Mm -hmm. Just gave so many people work. Yeah. Like everybody was constantly going in for MTV. Like in New York, it was like MTV. Yeah. That was all the thing. I mean, like I was always on the fringe of everything. Like I'd never got on Guy Code. And then you had a hidden I was camera on Girl show. Code, I was on, I did a sketch of Girl Code where I was I making out that. with Jamie Lee. Remember yep, that? yep, yep. Um, I, I did that. have a hidden camera show though. That was and you awesome. pranked you pranked my best friend. Are you serious? Yes. How did, did we ever talk about I this? I told you this. Like, I think it might have been maybe the first time I ever met you. You were, it was a like setup where she was coming in to be an inter, she was being interviewed as a babysitter. Oh my God. And That's this one lady of the great was pranks, like dude. pregnant, right? She's like eight months pregnant and she was drinking. Oh. <laughs> like she, and she asked my friend, can you pour me, um, a like glass of vodka <laughs> and she did and like i remember her being like oh i'm going for an interview to be a babysitter she really didn't know oh and then it, later on we found out like when i was doing stand-up i was like i must have mentioned your name she's like he was on the fucking show that's hilarious and i think i may have said it the first time i met you i was like you pranked my friend <laughs> And they never ended up airing that episode because it was so bad. Yeah, like that really? was bad. The drinking yeah. on, while pregnant was a bad thing. Yeah. I'm not sure. It might have been we either cut it or we, we might have canceled that whole bit. But I remember we did a similar thing where we brought in babysitters 
And then we made them act out how they would babysit on dolls that were different ages. So <laughs> it was our unborn child as an infant. <laughs> then at six, and she's this grown doll. And we're like, all right, we're like, be easy, gentle with Madison. That's fantastic. It was really funny. It's Madison. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's so we embarrassing. It was so Oh, my God. Whoever did that must have been so embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're like, I was like, oh, Madison, like. Oh, and then she, the mother started talking to Madison and being like, oh, Madison, like you still love mommy, right? Even though, say you're the person we're pranking, yeah. Carly's much younger and prettier than mommy. <laughs> and daddy has is, keeps looking at her this whole time. It goes so awkward. Mm. It was amazing. All right, so wait, sorry, we're getting off topic. Sorry. But Carly, um, I always thought, and I don't know if this is completely incorrect, but it strikes me these days as like people when people notice somebody as killing it, like that person has been around for a really long time. Yeah. It seemed to me like your success with girl code felt like one of the closer things to overnight success that I've seen since I've been doing this. Yeah. Yeah. It it was, it was, it was like, I did get the audition to do it from doing stand up, but right. I was so new, you were new at right? doing stand up. I was like six months right. in. I remember meeting you I before. mean, to have even a good set at six months in at a show, it was wild. Totally. And Ryan Ling, the guy who created it, was in the crowd and had like, you know, was like sent me an email the next day. Like his people sent me an email like, oh, we're doing this thing. It's not greenlit yet. It's a spinoff if you want to come in on audition. So I had never been in front of the camera before I had never filmed anything Amazing. and it was my first ever audition and I got it. And crazy, by the dude? way, the wow. only thing I've ever gotten. <laughs> I got my shit. first thing and then that was it. <laughs> <laughs> from an audition. Yeah. Right. Yeah. From an audition. From an audition. But now so, but now you you're you're huge. I mean, what you must have there must be other things, not necessarily to say auditions, but uh other things that you've gotten. Yeah, I mean, I've gotten I've gotten some stuff. I've gotten some stuff. But that was like the first thing that I. First thing that I ever did. That's amazing. Imagine going to your first audition ever mm -hmm. and getting it. And then it's a turns out to be something successful. So it was like it's really amazing. a lot of stuff that happened. Crazy. And it was just like such an unrealistic. Introduction, totally. you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And in a way, it, it might even be give you a, a false sense of how it works because <laughs> right you know if i if that had happened to me i would have been like yeah this is so easy, is easy <laughs> yeah. you know? i don't know what people like, are talking what about. are you losers doing <laughs> just go on an audition yeah right right <laughs> I, I met you at the lantern i think it was yes. the first time yeah and you were i remember whoever so you were with telling ago. me how oh my new God. you were and everything and like i was new too but like i felt experienced because i've been doing it what three four years or right right and you know yeah so it, it was just crazy and the other thing too was that guy code had already existed and was a successful show in its own right but it was more like niche right it was right, like the right. mtv2 thing yeah and then girl code was fucking huge yeah it's like explosion and it made a ton of people's careers it wasn't like that aquafina's first thing too um yeah i think that was her first thing actually she was on it towards the end okay um nessa was on it who's like killing it she does talk stoop and right. you know there's been a lot of success from it it's great did you say yeah. jamie lynn was on it jamie lee. jamie lee jamie lee who was in crashing Yes, right. she was in Crashing. She's so great. Yeah, she's yeah. so funny. I have a huge crush on her. Yeah, she's super funny. She's a great comedian, too. Yeah. She yeah, had she been is. doing stand-up for a while before. I remember yeah, her being like one of the people that like had been doing right. it for a long yeah. time. Am I, am I allowed to say that I have a crush on somebody? Yeah. Yeah. I think. It, I mean, what, I don't but know. What if, they're not, what if they're not some untouchable famous person? What oh, if like they're if like it's someone you're going to bump into? One right. degree away. Well, because there's right. no way you would know enough about them to have a crush on them, so it would be weird. Unless it's somebody who's known right. and out there. If it's just some random girl who works at Starbucks, like you go there every day to see her, and you <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> I, had a crush, I had a crush on the girl at the cupcake shop for a while. Really? Yeah. And that's I wrote sweet. a long blog about it. Did she ever see it? I don't think so, because when I go in there, she still smiles at me. Well, You should send it to her it's a lot of words <laughs> it's too many words what for made me to you send to her. what made you write it did um, you love her i think i wrote that i was in love with her okay now. yeah so maybe don't show her <laughs> yeah <laughs> well you know somebody who gives you cupcakes it's hard not to love that person right it's like girls being like attracted to bartenders you're like always oh, of course you're going to be attracted to that yeah. person he's nice he gives you drinks it's hard to not be like 
I like you. I have a to lot. say though, one time I was a bartender for a bit at uh, the Mason Jar in Murray Hill. Wow. And one time I went home with a girl and we were hooking up and clothes were coming off and she stopped me and I was like, oh, sorry, you know, what? everything okay? And she goes, it's just, I mean, you're a bartender. Oh my God. And I was, I wanted to be like, did you not know that before? We met at the bar. <laughs> we met when I gave you a drink. I, I, <laughs> so I, rude, dude. That's I so nasty. I handed you your bill. It's not as if I was hiding this. Right. You tipped me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and also, at the time, I had done other jobs before it where I then went into bartending because I felt as though that was some strange rite of passage I needed to fulfill. Some box I needed to check that yeah. the idea of being Paying a starving dues. artist in New York went hand in hand with some period of bartending. Right. But I quickly realized that tutoring was far more lucrative and I liked it better. Right, right. I understand wanting to be involved in the service industry. I think that everybody should at some point work as a bartender or a waiter or something like that. Changes because you respect people so much more. Right. You know, you'll mm. never be in a restaurant like, oh, what the, what the fuck are these people doing? It's like, you know, they bust their ass, right. you know? Totally. So I can see that. I think it makes you a better person, honestly, because yeah. it's a hard job. Did you yeah. ever work in the service industry? I worked as I was a bus boy, mm. boy, for <laughs> three years. You were the Mulan of yeah. bus people. Yeah. <laughs> Cut your hair off. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> your father was enlisted to come bus tables, but you stepped in due to his chronic back pain. Right. <laughs> Let's get down to business <laughs> to restock the bar <laughs> dude one of the best insults i ever heard about somebody was th someone called someone else a bus boy and i was like what does that mean they were like they don't bring anything to the table they just take things away that's so funny <laughs> oh my god that's so oh my mean. god and it's so you don't know where it's going you think yeah. it's like some like asshole right uh, right i know a lot of people like that too. dude me yeah. too man jesus yeah, just parasites <laughs> that's so funny yeah that is hilarious. Um, Sorry, yeah, so, so keep I going. Did that. You were a busboy, yeah. I was a busboy, but I was young. I was 13 to like 16. It was my first job. Mm. And then I worked at hair salons for many years. And yeah, I worked at um, Crunch Fitness really? for, when I was 16. And I'm pretty sure I got fired. Mm. Where was where? On Long Island. Oh. Why'd you get fired? Um, because they wanted me to do the daycare like the person who ran the daycare, first of all, what? Um, I'm 16. <laughs> I barely come to work on time. You want me to watch kids? So the person who ran the daycare like quit or something and they were like, oh, you have to do this. And I mean, the it didn't last long. Mm. It didn't last long. I was a kid. I had no idea what I was doing. The kids that came in were the worst. One of them took a shit in the middle of the floor I and he wasn't was two he was like six <laughs> so to me it's like this is not my problem right and i get paid five dollars an hour i'm not cleaning up this kid this grown man's shit <laughs> i've also always That's found insane. it i find it strange when gyms have a daycare i know i also am kind of like that's great I get it. I get it. Because people don't have time. And, you sure. Know. But a out. crunch. Fit, it's one thing if an Equinox has. But right, if it's right, me, 16-year-old right. me right. at Crunch Fitness. Yeah. You're like, I'm going to leave my kid with her. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, There's no need. I was like smoking cigarettes outside of the gym every 15 minutes. Just the most un like, I don't even know. I got a job there because my brother worked there and is like a fitness person. Mm -hmm. So they must have thought. Did you, have you stopped smoking? I yeah, smoked I the, the jewel. jewel. I right. smoked the jewel. Yeah, I stopped smoking cigarettes. I smoked cigarettes for a really long time. Yeah. I remember we've had a couple smoke breaks. Francis was yeah. shaming me earlier couple on stogies. an earlier episode. Yeah. <laughs> a couple shows. You've it. never smoked a cigarette in your life? I, 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 I've had, you know, One. half a, It hurts me. He's one of those guys who bums a cigarette. No, it I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I've had enough yeah. puffs of a cigarette that to realize that every single time it yeah. feels like I'm being punched in the lungs. You got to get used to it. Yeah, you do. I smoke you got to get used to copious it. amounts I of marijuana. It does mm -hmm. not it's feel not the same, same way. It's not the same. I think that 
Did you start, Julio, did you start smoking cigarettes when you were like a kid? No. As an wow. Adult. Okay. So I stupid. started when I was super young. So I was just like, I you're doing smoking. it because you think you're cool. 13. I smoked my first cigarette when I was 13. How did you get through yeah. the SATs? I never took the SATs. I'm taking smoke breaks, dude. <laughs> uh, I never took the SATs, Francis. I didn't. It wasn't like. Did you I go to college? Graduate. No. Oh. Okay. I never went to college. No I wonder never you're took doing the SATs. So much better than me. <laughs> <laughs> smoke when you're a kid yeah. and never go to college i was learning middle eastern foreign policy and you were learning comedy which is what we're both right. doing i started now, doing so. comedy when i was really young too yeah, you yeah. know um but yeah i'm not saying don't go to college if you have interest in it if you're good at school go but i would i there was nothing that i was like i'm so interested in this i want to go to school for it mm. i didn't feel mm. that way and i wasn't in a situation where i was like okay yeah go like piss away four years you know mm -hmm. i had to figure it out so like what was your life plan were you did you have one were you like this is what i'm gonna do were you attempting to figure um, that out well i wanted to be a hairdresser okay. i went to beauty school while i was in high school cool. um so i started when i was like 15 and then by the time i graduated high school i had my license my cosmetology license because i went half the day to like beauty school which is so funny because <laughs> i right. was like i was a kid yeah, um it's so silly too because it was all like the really bad kids in school right. would go to like trade school they had mechanics exactly. they had you know cosmetology mm -hmm. the nursing um so i was going to be a hairdresser i worked at hair salons for many years and then i had to get surgery in my back and then i was like laid up for a year i had a sp i had a disc removed in my spine and i was right. like 19 turning 20 at the time so after that, I was like, what the fuck am I going to do? Because I really wasn't qualified to do anything. I, I had no experience. I didn't go to school, you know, and I couldn't stand up all day and do hair anymore because I was just like, right. Like Your back was my really, back was yeah. fucked up. That's so shitty. It was so scary. So I didn't know what I was going to do. And I was like, I've always wanted to try and do stand up. Let me just go out and try do it out. after I go to work because I got a job as a receptionist. So I would get out at three and I would just go do open mics after that. Mm. Um, but wow. yeah, it was weird. It took me, f I had a plan and then it just completely got shit on. And then I ended up in the right spot. Mm. You know? I love that's those stories of kind of like letting, allowing the universe to speak to you. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, I want to, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like your parents who have met lovely people, they mm -hmm. must have been like, what the fuck is your life? What mm. happened? What's they going on? They were like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> You know, because you can't get a job, any, especially in New York City, you can't get a job anywhere with no, with no college. I mean, right. I w applied to stores, shoe stores, like right. clothing stores. They were like, did you go to fashion school? <laughs> Even at the store? I'm like, this is Urban Outfitters. Really? <laughs> I need a degree to really? work here. Yes. What? Wow. Yeah. Because there's so many people that want that job and they have more qualifications than you. That's you know? crazy. You're right. Yeah. It's so like... it's like you really, you can't, I couldn't find a job anywhere. But yeah, it was kind of like it worked out the right way. Um, mm -hmm. But it definitely was not easy for a while. You know, you say letting yeah. the, the universe speak to you. I like to consider it that sometimes the universe fails you towards what you're meant to be doing. Right. Right. Same, There's a, a process of yeah, elimination that is out of your own hands. Right. And uh, that was definitely the case with me. I got rejected by all the law schools that any one of which had I gotten in, I would, would have stayed at. And it was only because I only got into a bad law school that I was like, uh. And you would have just been the guy who gives the good best man speech. And that's it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> who everyone, everyone's like, dude, you should try stand up. And I'd be like, everyone tells me I should try stand up. Right. Like, I've, heard, I've heard it's a tumultuous existence. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's my impression of you, apparently. Yeah. So you were a lawyer? Or no? I went, you I know, went I, I went to law, law school, school for four days. Wow. So and then crazy. withdrew. No, yeah. Wow. That's pretty crazy, Four man. days. Yeah. And I would say a lot of the very successful people that I know have stories. Where, like, I know a guy who worked at Goldman Sachs for one day. It's like the working a place for less than a week that seems to be a good situation and it's leaving It's like it what happened in those four days? Well. I'm sure you've explained this a million not, times. I mean, I don't know if I really curious. have. The biggest thing was that I, I had gone into law school with this idea that it would provide a lot of options for me mm -hmm. and that it was a, another way to kind of bulk my resume. And I didn't necessarily know that I wanted to be a lawyer, but mm -hmm. I, a lot of people I admired had law degrees. Right, right. And so uh, I went for four days to Fordham Law School. And uh, I remember each day it became more and more clear 
that the education I was about to undergo for the next three years was so specific to becoming mm -hmm. a lawyer that this idea I had that, you know, I could go into politics or, you know, work, you right. know, courtships at, at the Hague or human rights abuses, whatever it might be, uh, at, at, at least I would be a lawyer for like 10 years before that. Right, right, And I right. didn't, I didn't want that. Yeah. I didn't want to be a lawyer. So when I realized that, it felt so not fitting right, to me. Right. And I, w I withdrew the night before I had to pay tuition for the first semester. Nice. Yeah. And do those international like gigs, whether you're doing law or whatever, like you then have to live in fucking the Netherlands for a bit. You know what I mean? Like it's so right. shitty. The idea of just having to like uproot your family constantly yeah. all over the world. Yeah. Whatever yeah. shit you're dealing with. You know what I mean? Even if, and it's a lot of the times, fair. yeah, yeah, you're right. dealing with like these horrible human rights abuses like you said and you're going to these like terrible countries and right. setting up shop there for six months like it just sounds like very stressful existence yeah yeah i don't i don't know exactly i mean i it, it, to this day it's the best decision i've ever made yeah to get it's out freeing of it. too to stop yeah. doing something that you don't feel com like don't feel happy about right you know yeah. it's nice to be like i don't want to do this anymore i'm not doing it right this assignment you've given yourself yeah literally yeah what it is. i went from having an assignment of 40,000 pages of textbooks to read for homework over the three years that I was going to be there to not having to do it. Yeah. Just flip <laughs> I mean, the switch. You know, it's like, oh. Can't really beat that. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> amazing. And then I started, I started tutoring kids, you know. What did you really teach fun. them? Uh, I, I mostly work with kids on, on like, uh, there was a standardized test that I got good at teaching, which was the eighth grade test. Okay. To help kids apply to like boarding schools or oh, private wow. schools okay. called the SSAT. Okay. It was the secondary school's admissions test. Eighth graders were great. That was my That's sweet a sweet spot, spot right? Yeah, because they, they're, not, they're not old enough to give you too much shit. Right. <laughs> but you can kind of talk to them about adult stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they're not kids. Correct. They're kids, but they're not like little kids. Yeah, they're, they're still respectful, right. but they're becoming they're aware. They're not rambunctious. Right, yeah. right. Right. So I, I really liked that. And, uh, you know, I, I, I really got good at it. And I was charging $300 an hour by the time I was nice. I just closed up shop. Just similar to, you know, what your legal fee would For have been. For being a lawyer. Yeah, <laughs> right? exactly. Yeah. So. That's so true. <laughs> yeah. Fucking awesome. Yeah. Crazy. Um, all right, Carly. So we were thinking this morning that it would be fun to talk about pet peeves. I love that. Because I know that I have, I literally have a pet peeve list in my phone. I wrote I a couple people, down on people my People ask here. me about my pet peeves and I want to be able to accurately represent myself. Right, right. Did right. I see you do this at UCB once? Did you used to run a no. show about pet peeves? No. Oh, never mind. This is my phone case, Francis. I want you to look at it. The Rock. Okay, it's Dwayne. The Rock. <laughs> I needed Dwayne you to J. see that. DJ. Um, so I wrote down a couple because you had texted me when I was on my way here. I, my biggest, I think the worst personality trait someone can have is being a one-upper. Whether mm. it's like, I'm going to tell you what it really is. I hate that. that I hate people that are like, I need you to know I'm smarter than you. Or I know more about this. Or they tell you that you're wrong. And they just like, nothing makes you sound more stupid than thinking that you're right about everything mm. all the time. Totally. You know what I'm saying? With no like openness of like, oh, maybe I'm wrong. Let me listen to this person's point right. of view. I hate that. Yeah, that's um, bad. Or even in the context of like, you're telling a story about something great you did and they're just cocking up their better story. Oh, totally. They're not totally. listening. Dude, I read somewhere that uh, the sign of a really bad listener is somebody who takes what you've just said and then allows it to spur them into a similar story from their own life. Right. Interesting. And a better one. Like <laughs> instead of instead of right. taking what you've said and trying to provide helpful feedback about your specifically, situation. right, right. That's my biggest. That's my biggest pet peeve. Mm -hmm. Also, I hate name droppers. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of name droppers. Um, that's and we're in quite the industry who, for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and people who don't um like respect other people's time. And that could be like with work stuff. That could be with relationships. I hate that. It's Phone like calls. you say you're going to do something, you have to do it. 100%. You know what I'm saying? Don't mm. leave anybody hanging. Don't ghost someone. Right. I hate that too. I have a friend who does the, the time thing, but he has this irritating way of when he violates your time, 
he overcompensates with doing something really sick for you. So oh, like nice. you end up not being mad at him. <laughs> But like every right. time I'm like, I know that he's going to be 40 minutes late. Right. But then he'll just show up and pay for the whole thing or something. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I mean? But that's like a beat quality where I'm yeah. just like, dude, just to the point where I'll be like, listen, man, I'm going to leave at this time no matter what. So, right. And right. Then that'll maybe get him in gear. Yeah. Or you tell him you're, he has to be there an hour before. Right. 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 Well, oh, that's interesting. You mm-hmm. know, that's what you got to do sometimes. And then, of course, oh, that's the day he shows up on time. <laughs> and he's like, what the fuck? You're wasting my time. Hilarious. <laughs> Dude, you know what I don't like? Hit me. What? I don't like people who are smart enough to trap you in a lie. Oh. <laughs> let me, let well, me give you, you an lying? example. Well, why are you lying? So, it, here, it, <laughs> here's, you'll, you'll see what I mean when, when, when I give this example. When okay. I was like a freshman in college or sophomore, we went home to Maine for Christmas, or maybe it was the summer, or whatever. And my friend had a party at his house, and his parents were there. And uh, I was trying to organize a game of beer pong, right? But I guess this kid, I, who's a very good friend of mine, had told me that he didn't think the parents would be okay with us playing beer pong on this table. And so I was like, all right, all right, I'll just go ask. And he was like, okay. And I didn't go ask. All right. Now, but my intention was to clean up the table. It was like a glass surface. It wasn't something that would get stained by beer spilling. And then I went and like 10 minutes later, I started setting up the cups. And my friend came up to me and he was like, did you get permission? Is this okay from the parents? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got permission. He was like, really? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, what'd they say? And I was like, oh, they were just like, it's no big deal. You can play beer pong. And he was like, huh, which parent said that? And I was like, I don't know, the mom. And he was like, huh, that's funny. Because I just walked upstairs and asked them if you had just asked them permission. And they had no recollection of you doing that. You're lying to me. No beer pong. And I was wow. like, whoa. That's crazy. Entrapment, right? That is. Yeah. That's frustrating. And, yeah. and not many people are smart enough to lay that trap. Right, right. right. But some people are. That's, that really that's grinds my gears. Yeah. That's good yeah. and specific. Yeah. Um, that's, all right. Have, has that ever happened to you? Yeah, of course. You had someone walk you into a trap. They're right. Like, huh, so. And there's no worse feeling than feeling like everybody knows you lied. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You almost want to be like, if you're my friend, why, why are you, you doing this? Cut, start at the be- like, cut me out in the beginning. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? I lied. You don't need to dress it up. Right. right don't right. make me lie more to you. Right. He could have just <laughs> been like, I know you didn't ask. Why are you setting the cups up? Exactly. You know right. what I'm saying? He didn't have to ask you, did you do this? And yeah. then ask you more questions right, right after. That. Like right. build the case against yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. That's he clowned you. Yeah. He clowned you. And also yeah. there's something weird about that because it's such an uncomfortable situation. That that situation just made me uncomfortable. Right? I caught you. Like right. I'd almost rather let them do it and know they did it and never say anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. it speaks to it speaks to having a, a horrible personality. <laughs> like the type of person that yeah. would do that. You you're just trying to you're trying to make people look bad. <laughs> yeah. And now that guy has three daughters. He does? <laughs> and he wants a son so badly and it's not gonna happen. <laughs> Sucks. Are you guys still friends? How do you know yeah, it's not going to happen? You know, I just get the sense. It's just one of those things. <laughs> and if you think about it, the odds of having three daughters are like 12.5%. Yeah. Really? L- low. Yeah. Because each time it's a 50% and, you know, combination or permutation or whatever. That's interesting. 0.5 yeah. times 0.5. You guys get it. Come on. All right. Tell me what you think about some of these. I got okay. a list. And I these love are, your Some list. of these are very specific. Okay. I hate when people say a shot of espresso. Yeah. Why? Because it's not a fucking show. It's right. a thing that's supposed to be sipped and savored and drank over a period of time. It's not a thing you fucking crushed a right, caffeine right. fucking... It just feels like yeah. painfully... You like crack it on your head when you're done with it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Funneling espresso. It's the hottest shot I've ever had. Ah. You literally ah, can't take a shot of it. You gotta chase with ice cubes. <laughs> All right, you Can guys, I tell you something so compelling. funny? Yes, please. I was once on a date with this guy who was the worst and he, <laughs> he was the absolute worst and he ordered espresso at the end of the day. He was like trying to make it like he was classy and like <laughs> oh, he was trash from Orlando, Florida. Okay, <laughs> and he orders and a shot of espresso. Sorry, he orders yeah. espresso when we're done eating, and he put 
milk in it. Oh my god! <laughs> in the tiny. <laughs> Oh my god, that's insane! Oh <laughs> he my put god. milk and sugar oh my and god. mixed it. I was like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> oh my he was god. like, "Oh, I got espresso." I was like, "You can't just put milk in the tiny cup." <laughs> the little. <laughs> How are you? Crazy are you supposed to? Are you supposed to drink espresso completely? You can no, make you a latte. Can. You can make but a latte with a little cup, right? A latte no. is oh, espresso you don't, you with don't milk, yeah, yeah, yeah. but the in the little cup. espresso cup, or you could put lemon, like the lemon wedge. You put sugar. Huh. You could like do stuff with espresso, but to take the tiny espresso <laughs> cup, I don't know why it was the funny. I was like, I can never see him again. <laughs> He's treating I just it can't like do it's it. the He's being so disrespectful. Smallest coffee. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. room for a quarter ounce of milk. Yeah, that was yeah. it. <laughs> The cherry on top. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Like man. a half a teaspoon of milk. I'm yeah. like, what are you doing? Yes. <laughs> With the little spoon, too, just pouring milk in it. <laughs> That's pathetic. <laughs> I'm glad this is thought provoking. Good. This is good. I, this is good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I just, that's like the. One of the weirdest reasons why I never saw someone again. <laughs> <laughs> There's something off putting about somebody attempting to create a facade, especially when it's unbelievably see-through right right mm. right it's you know? yeah it was really transparent and he was like that he was like trying to be you know when people are really flashy to the point where you're like okay yes you know mm -hmm. nobody cares that's also one of my pet peeves i hate flashy totally it's stupid mm. tacky solid i don't like the term a shock of red hair <laughs> <laughs> who said that to you <laughs> That's how people describe people with really red hair. He had a shock of red hair. Really? Would you be described as having a shock? I don't think Probably so. Not. I don't think mine is shocking. Oh, like it was shocking. That's the point. No, I think it, it is a way to describe. You hear it more in books, I guess, but it is a way of describing people with red hair. hair. A shock of red hair. As if it really makes people, whoa. I wasn't as if ready they've for been that. electrocuted. Yeah. Right. It's alarming. On Look fire. at that. Ooh. A shock of red hair. I've never heard that. No, I, don't I like won't that. say it, though. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like uh, I don't like redheads. <laughs> I really don't. I really don't. There's this there's this fucking attempt at brotherhood, and I just fucking hate it. They have things like you know National Ginger Gather Day, and there should what? never be more than two redheads in one place at a time. <laughs> People get nervous. It's not good. You ever seen pictures of lots of redheads? Oh. The whole fucking <laughs> Weasley family in Harry Potter, is, like, ugh. Is your fam? Did, are people in your family redhead? No. Really? Yeah. You're the only one because it's rare. They're... It's a rare gene. It is right. And mine is so much less red now than it was growing mm -hmm. up. But then the other thing was right. people would always ask me, "Does the carpet match the drapes?" Right. Which irked me too. It's and an I, annoying question. Right. Yeah. You like, must have got that right. all the time. Oh, I before. got that all the fucking time. Wait, Colin had pink hair. Oh. I had bright, bright red, like, for years. Oh, I had sorry. bright, like, fire engine red. Yeah. And people would be like, does the carpet match the drapes? I'm like, honestly, first of all, this is obviously not natural. Right. It was the color <laughs> of a stop sign. So it's like, yeah, no, I bleach and dye my vagina. Wouldn't like, that be what are funny you? Yeah. To keep it consistent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to just play tricks on yeah. people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You like but to everyone who's asking. Me, and I was always, like, weirded <laughs> out, too, because guys would, like, come up to you at a bar like come up to me at a bar and say that and i'm like yeah what mm -hmm. like why would you ever feel comfortable coming up to a stranger and saying what color are your pubes yeah i get it a lot so it is the weird truck match the station right yeah. it's fucking insane to make <laughs> that into so a pickup weird. line so weird so talking about yeah. a vagina in a pickup line is just not a good wild idea. we should agree on that why no talking about someone's vagina never no that's yeah. like a third or fourth line. Kind of right. Yeah, are you this sweaty Mid between your legs too? Like I can't imagine a yeah. way. <laughs> I can't imagine a way to bring up a vagina. It's tactfully. so weird. It was so weird. And it happened a lot. A lot. Mm. Having crazy hair like that, it made people like think that they had no, there was no boundary. Like, oh, she's wacky and crazy and you could say whatever you want. It was so bizarre the things people used to say to me. Mm. I don't miss it. Yeah. That's bad. Must it be nice weird. being able to just not have to deal with that. Yeah, anymore. I mean, you could do it. You could dye it. <laughs> I can't. I've worn this like a badge of badge of honor. I mean, it's it's nice. You know who loves my hair? Who? Old women. Oh yeah. Very old women. <laughs> yeah, for they sure. They come up and they'll touch it. Yeah. And they'll say, "Oh my god, is that natural?" Wow. And I'm like, <laughs> "Well, yeah." Because that's like goals. They want light. They want my pretty hair. light yeah. hair. Mm -hmm. Amber. 
Yeah. It's a nice color, Francis. It is. It's very nice. All so right, what, what do you else, think about Julio? this? Okay. I hate when people address the internet as a person. So mm-hmm. be like, oh, internet, I love you. I hate that. Right. <laughs> is that right. thought? Is that understandable? That understandable. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I, oh, I think there's, there are other ways that, that I've heard it too. You know, like, damn you, internet. Yeah, right. Be, or like the internet wins. Oh, I guess that could be like not talking about it as a person. Again. Internet wins again. Yeah. Yeah. The internet was wild today. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, I'm not like personifying the internet when I think of that, but I do think it becomes a different entity that encompasses far too many things to call it one thing. Right. Right. Does that make sense? There's something about it as like a person that's extra. Like mm-hmm. the same that like people who say they're real vampires. It just seems people like the same. People say that? Yeah. Who says that? I watched, there's a show called The Dark Tourist on Netflix and this guy. Oh, I love that show. It's a great show. So there's one, he goes to New Orleans and he finds these real vampires and he's like, so you're gay though and he's straight. He's like, are you sure there's nothing sexual about this? And the guy's like, yeah, man. He's like, if I don't feed, like, I can't see well. Oh my God. My hair gets blurry. And then he like picks a couple things on this poor kid's back and he's just like, Oh God! That's so what? crazy. I didn't see that episode. It's crazy. He milks a dude's back for, for blood. blood. <sighs> Tries to he's six ounces. He says, and he's like, "That's quite a lot." Six ounces. Can't you die? You can't be just drinking people's blood. No, you can sell. I used to sell my blood in college to for, who? Sp- for spending money to a oh, blood okay. research facility. Oh, okay, cool. No and surprise there. I would sell. Uh, Don't look at me. You could sell up idea. to a quart. Which I didn't realize how much of your actual blood Court in your body is that lot. is. Oh, yeah. That'll affect It's a lot day. of blood. But I was young, and I was getting 50 bucks a quart. Hey. So, yeah, I know it's not much. My parents hear that story, and they feel bad. But, you know, they well, should. They should have given me more money. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough out there trying to fit in. All these rich kids. <laughs> I was like borrowing 40 bucks from friends to go out. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> I'm going to go sell my blood now. Bye. To buy my girlfriend Gotta a present. Got to go to the, the, wow. Would you, would you ever give sperm? Yeah, that's what I was just about to ask you. No, because of the idea of just having people, like having offspring that I didn't know about right. worked me. That's how I feel about, that's why I feel even if I chose not to have kids, I, I don't think I would ever like donate my eggs or anything Auto. like that. Remember the auto yeah, story? Yeah, you can make yeah. so much money. You on can eggs, make a so. lot of money on eggs, but it's like, I don't know. It's it's definitely a personal preference, but mm. it wouldn't be worth it to me. Mm. You know, just like thinking, oh, I might have little half of me walking around somewhere, <laughs> right. being all cute. Yeah, it's and weird. I can't like see the kid. It's insane, and I'll never know. Yeah, we have a friend that's a sperm donor baby, and she found out like a couple years ago that um she has like 15 brothers and sisters no and guess way. who and, her dad is and yeah her dad is like the winner of survivor richard hatch yeah <laughs> is he, he had, donated so much sperm that yeah. he has 16 kids he had a particularly potent sample yeah oh my god and with 23 and me it's made the like uh anonymous factor like obsolete right so now you can figure out who your parents are right and all these people are realizing richard hatch is their father well, there was the story that, that came crazy? out a couple of years ago about the crazy. guy who had like 130 kids as a sperm donor. They oh. made a movie about it. Vince Vaughn. It was oh, really? Vince Vaughn started the oh, movie. Oh, that's right. I saw it. Yeah, yeah. And it was like course. based on that real story. Did you, um, would you ever do that? Donate sperm or no? Uh, I think I would. Really? For yeah. money? I don't even know. I don't even know what it, what it would fetch well, but, at market. But that's what I'm saying. Like you, what else would you be donating it for? I like the idea that um, if there is a, is a person out there, a woman who wants to have children but right. hasn't found or is prevented from doing so for whatever reason, right. that I could help. Right, you would be very, a good candidate. Nice. You would be picked a lot. But I feel like is, at the sperm clinic because like you smoked half a cigarette your whole life. Yeah, right. you know what I'm saying. They ask you, have you do you smoke? Right, stuff like that. They but they also they also know that you're a redhead, and there are a lot of people apparently who don't want that. Really, See, I would want that. Apparently, there were there was a, an article I read that sperm banks were turning away redheads. Wow, that sucks. Which you know, yeah, it's, it's just another place I can't go. <laughs> there's so many so so fucking annoying yeah beaches you know schools whatever it's like <laughs> school. as you sip your tea 
Poor Francis, man. Just go to school. That's right, dude. Oh, that tutoring thing. I don't know. All oh, right. Dude, uh, there were women that I, moms of kids I tutored that would, would come on to me, though. Really? Yeah. Did you ever hook up with one of them? No, but I think there was an opportunity to. One time a woman would just text me all the time about like her Pilates <laughs> class and, and, and just stuff that had nothing to do with the kid. I had a creepy tennis client who had so much work done that I couldn't tell if she was 75 or if she used to be a man. She had gender <laughs> neutral. She had like, you know what I mean though? Like when you have a lot of work done, it starts becoming ambiguous. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but anyway, she was like sort of hot and like how to, like, I don't know. And she would text me all this stuff. She And she was this Israeli woman. And she would send me gifts. She'd be like, I sent you a sweater in the mail. Like she, <laughs> then I would return them and buy my mother gifts. <laughs> but she would say, I wish you would cuddle me tonight. But we never did anything. We never like messed around. I, you wish, she said she wished nice, that you what? Would cuddle her. And she was married. Yeah, I was open to the idea, to be honest, of like, maybe, you know. But then it yeah. never happened. And I kind of felt bad. And I don't think she, and then at one point she's like, just so you know, I love my husband and I would never do anything. I was like, all right, well, this is weird now. Right. Why are you sending me sweaters in the mail? Yeah. Yeah. She sent me nine. She, she might end up hearing this. It's fine. Um, but whatever. But that, that's the closest I ever got to like banging a tennis client, I think. I don't yeah. I never did that. Did you you never did it with a tutor? I never did. I, I it was it scared me. Also, you know, I liked the kids I was tutoring. I didn't want to have them have to like start calling wanna, like, me dad. Be or their something. dad, yeah. Yeah, you know? <laughs> that's weird. Yeah, I, I always picture this moment of like now you're like banging this kid's mom and you're just he wakes up one morning and you have your shirt off at the table reading the paper. You're yeah. like, hey, sport. I made yeah. some fucking, <laughs> I made egg and waffles for you. Hey, Sparky, right. I'm going to be hanging out here a little more now. So you and I better get to know each other real well. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Um, What else, Julio? Any okay, other okay, pet I got peeves? I a couple more good ones. Um, I love your pet peeves. I hate when people bring their fucking bike on the subway. Hate oh, that's it. bad. Hate well, it. You have a bike. Ride it home. Ride the bike. No, yeah. Or lock it up and go get it tomorrow. I don't want to see your fucking bike. If you're riding, if you bring your bike on the subway, you better ride it at least 30 stops. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It better be a right. distance that was just not really feasible right. on the bike. You better be right. biking to Montauk. Right. Or if yeah. you like have so some problem with your bike, then you can bring your bike on the subway. Right. Like if a tire gets fucked up or something, you can't ride it. Yeah. 100%. You know? But you can't just be pe seeing people walk down the steps to go into the subway with a bike. It's like, what are you doing? It's crazy to me. <laughs> Honestly, what are you doing? It's crazy. But do they have another option? You can't put it on a cab. You can ride it. But <laughs> <laughs> I know it's you can ride option. it. But I'm saying, what could you do if the bike is like fucked up? Oh, well, I, they typically are wheeling this bike onto right, the subway. Right, right, right. You know it, what I mean? Right. It's a little bit like seeing a, a car on one of those trains that carries cars. Right. Yeah, it's similar, for sure. It was one of those, uh, it was one of those points that like didn't really need to be made. No, it's true. You no, know? it is true, though. But that's, it is true. Like, but it's much worse. Much. The bike's much worse because the car, you're not in the car on the train. <laughs> Imagine if you were. That would be so weird. Really weird. Like, I just want to see the scenery. <laughs> hey, really quick. Aquilino, is that Italian? Yes. What, what is with is you? Is it guys? really? Everyone yeah. is Italian. I thought it was I'm Portuguese. Sicilian. Portuguese. I thought it was Aquilino. <laughs> <laughs> with like a no, little I'm that, that thing. Sicilian. Yet, no way. How yes, do I not know Julio, this? I thought you knew this because you're know Italian. This. Yeah. That's really nice you have to the know. the most Italian name. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. happy to know that you're Italian. How exciting. did you not know? I thought you were Carly Aquilino. I, th I always thought You've you were. met my parents. I know, but I don't know. I thought, thought they were they Brazilian were or Portuguese. You thought they were Brazilian. It was unclear. That name. Wow. Is there an I H? Guess it is ambi no, no, it's yeah, AQU. I convinced myself. So no, I could the see end, that. There's no H? No. I, for some reason in my head, convinced myself that it was N H O. Like no. Ronaldinho. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you know? What the fuck? Yeah, mm. I can't believe we. I can't believe you never knew that. Do you do you live here in New York? Yeah, I live in Brooklyn. Yeah, for, were you in LA at some point? Nope. I huh. always would just go back and forth. If I um <clears throat> was like filming something out there or had to do something, I would just go do the work and come back. Got it. Because I don't want to. I don't want to move. Where do you live? Permanently, in I live in um, Bushwick. Okay. Yeah. You like it out there? I love it. Huh. Yeah. I lived in uh, Brooklyn Heights. 
for five oh, years. Oh, I liked Brooklyn Heights. I lived in Brooklyn Heights for a very, like, a few months. Gotcha. It's nice. Yeah. I was, like, in between apartments and I was living in Brooklyn mm. Heights. But I love Brooklyn Heights. And Bushwick's cool. You, you're looking at me like, it's gross. <laughs> I, I, I don't know Bushwick that well. I don't know it. Do you know Bushwick? Sort of. It's like cool. It like reminds me of Berlin. Cool bars. Sort of. Isn't There's it? A, yeah, it's a lot of cool bars and. Is it warehouses? Do you ever go to those warehouse so, parties? Some, t- some of yeah, I used to go to warehouse parties when I was like young. When I was like eighteen, I would go to warehouse parties in Brooklyn. But it's like the the area that I live in is in all warehouses. It's like a little further out. Got but it. yeah, they they made them lofts and they're nice. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Carla, you you talking about filming reminds me. That you have a very exciting, you have a movie coming out. Yeah. It's uh, not mine. I'm in it for a little bit. You no, saw you're it. Not I'm in it for a little, for a little bit. bit. You're in it for a lot of bit. And you're fantastic in it. And I mean Thank that. Thank you. I do mean that, I swear. Um, Thank you. Because I know people say that. But I was like, oh, this is Carl, the Carly. Because you, sometimes you see your friends act and like it's such a departure from what they're like when it didn't have to be. Right, right, right. And I understand if you're playing a part where you can't be like yourself, mm-hmm. but if you can, I don't understand why you wouldn't. Yeah. And I feel like, and, I don't, and again, so it's a Judd Apatow movie, mm-hmm. and I don't know if that was a, a testament also to his directing, because those scenes felt so... They were so much fun. It was so cool, because I was so nervous to go in, because I'm like, this is a big right. deal, you know? And I didn't want to ruin it. I didn't want to like have them... I was just had this like vision in my head of it going wrong, because I just am always paranoid about stuff like that. And I got there. Judd was so nice. He's like the coolest. He's calm. He's nice. He's just a regular guy. He's not intimidating to talk to. He's intimidating to think about. Right. But then you're like, oh, he's cool. Um, and he just let us have fun. I mean, we were sitting there for like hours and hours and hours. And he would just be like, oh, you guys just talk and see if anything happens. Right. You know, so it was real. It was that. And I also got lucky because it was Ricky and Pete. And right. I had just met Belle Powley, who was right. in the scenes with me, too. Um, and she was super cool. She's so great, it yeah. felt real. You know, it felt like, oh, I'm just hanging out with my friends. Totally. So I got I got lucky with that. But it was so much fun. It was so much fun. I'm really excited about it. Awesome. Because I always wonder that when I see those when I see those great scenes in these Judd Apatow movies where it seems like there's riffing happening. I'm like, right, how right. much of this was in the script? And after seeing Ricky working on it and seeing you guys work on it, I realized that he really found a way. And I don't know if everybody does this who makes movies and comedy or whatever, but to, to capture that. Right, and right. And like take enough alt takes and alt lines and he's he's feeding people lines and like it was, yeah. it was so cool. It, mm. it, was, it was really cool. It just was so, really cool. Just so everyone knows, we're talking about the movie about Pete Davidson's life that will be coming out sometime soon directed by judd apatow mm-hmm. starring pete as himself yeah bill burr is in it a bunch of people marissa tomei's in it steve buscemi's yeah. in it great cast. um it's so uh, i was watching it like wow it's so weird and i'm sure you feel this way too it's like holy shit this really happened I know. Mm. like this happened to somebody that i know for a long know. time I like it's just it it's just i'm so happy for everybody it's you so know? sick. Yeah. It's so just unbelievable. You know, and watching it all, I'm like, oh my God, Marissa Tomei, like, I love her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, totally. and she's great in it. She's so cute. What do you do? Yeah. What, like, what are you doing now? What's your what's your day to day? Um, my day to day right now, I'm just like during the day I'm chilling. Like I go on auditions and stuff like that. I'm not like filming anything right now. Um, and yeah, and I'm doing stand up. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. It's awesome. a good good stuff. Cool. Well, Carly, thank you for good. coming on. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Pleasure to have you. Thank you for having me and thank Lovely you for guest. the tea. It was so fun giving you tea. It was, yeah. I mean, you really were passionate about it. So I, I'm just glad I enjoyed you had it, it too. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Look, I'm loving Yeah, you haven't mm-hmm. finished it though. That's troubling. It's about half. Uh huh. <laughs> but I've been chatting. Go ahead. I'm going to <laughs> <I'm gonna> do a <laughs> shot. Just finish it. Take yeah. a shot of tea. I'm going to watch you. It's good. It's yeah. good. It's iced tea. Now. Drink the rest of it. Yeah. Um. But Carly, where can we find you? <laughs> you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, um, uh, at, at Carly Aquilino. No H. No H. <laughs> not no Portuguese. <laughs> and um, yeah. And that's that. Any, awesome. any upcoming dates that you have that you want to talk about? Um, I'm trying to think of when is this coming out? Like soon, right? Yeah. I'm in. I don't have it in front of me, so I'm not going to remember Got the dates it. of it. But follow me. Yeah, check her out. She'll mention <laughs> and, it there. And I'll, and I'll post it. I'll post it up. Very good. Awesome. Nice. Right. 
Francis? Uh, I'm at helium. Oh, no, this is coming out after that. Fuck, cut that, Chris. Um, I'm going to be at uh, Moon Tower in April in Austin. Uh, I'm also going to be at Wise Guys in Salt Lake City. And then um, New Mexico. And a whole bunch of other places. I have it all listed on my Instagram and stuff. So follow that at Francis CCLS. Yeah, and same at Not Julio. I got some shit coming up. Uh, yeah, hit me up. And, uh, you know, send us whatever you want to send us. Send us your oopses to Oops the Podcast. And YouTube. Check out our YouTube channel, Oops the Podcast. <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.